Hello everyone, welcome to our channel, Doom Productions. We make feature films and videos about films and filmmaking. And today, we are talking about the biggest mistake that directors make, specifically first-time directors, directors who are just starting out, filmmakers who are maybe making their first short film or maybe their first feature film. This is something that a lot of filmmakers in their early days of movie making experience and sometimes older mm -hmm. you know you can be an older you can be any age to have fallen into this trap this mistake um and that is not spending enough time with your actors mm -hmm. um it's something that maybe you know we don't think about very much but back in the day back in the you know golden age of hollywood or the 30s or the 40s a little bit before that it was um the director's job was to only work with the actors, and that's what directing meant. That's what it means in theater, just working you know, with the actors. Today, it's kind of morphed into this thing where directors are doing a bajillion different things at once, where they're kind of the captains of the ship. And especially no-budget filmmaking, um, you literally have to do a, a billion different things um, and move everything along. And we forget often that you know, actors are a key part in our process of, of making our movies. So yeah. w why is it a problem that, or why is it important that directors spend more time with actors? Why do they, what, what happens when they neglect spending time with their actors? Yeah, well, as the director, I mean, obviously, especially at our level where mm -hmm. the director is literally having to plan every step because chances are if you're making your films at a no budget level, you're the one who cares the most and is putting the most work and effort into making sure your movie happens. But what comes into the way really quickly is that means every decision has to come by you. And that means where do lights go? Where do food, where does food go? Where, what, what food are people eating? What, where should our crew be? Where should bags be stored? How can we get things in? Everyone kind of looks to the director for help, and that's a lot of busy work, yeah. and that really takes up a lot of time and energy. Even if it's simple answers or questions of like, yeah, put things here, do this there, all those things build up, and it makes it really hard to put your time into your actors because that's where a lot of the your expertise, the director or the person who's running this story, that's where your attention needs to be at because of how much again direction that takes and how much important is those conversations with actors are and. Actors need time to prepare. They mm -hmm. need time to kind of workshop what's going on. And um, sometimes in our level, like we don't get to rehearse ahead of time. Yeah. Actors have to just show up on the day and do the performance that they're supposed to do. So as a director, you need to be there with them to kind of walk them through that. So it's not wasting a ton of time trying to figure that out while cameras are rolling. And I but, think that's yeah. the biggest part is you're wasting time. If you don't give, if you don't spend time with your actor, to prepare, when you hit record, you're gonna get a bunch of maybe not so good takes from your actor, not what you're looking for. Ultimately, you're gonna be wasting time because instead of explaining to your performer what is supposed to be happening in the scene, where they're supposed to be, what you expect from them uh, before the cameras start rolling, if you do that while the cameras are rolling or like in between, that's gonna create a lot of problems, a lot of trouble with in terms of just wasting time and and doing things at a good pace to get through your movie. Now, yeah. some movies, this might not be a problem. Maybe it's you and a friend have committed to making a movie. Um, you'll shoot every Saturday for like two hours and you're kind of making things up or improv -ing. You know, there's certain cases where that's not always, you know, majorly important. Spending time to prep with your actor before. But mm -hmm. in those improv sessions, you will be spending time with your actor and, and talking about things during it. What's, yeah. real, what's really important when you, when you start talking to your actor before um, is you just get to know them and what they need from you. And once you know what you, they need from you, you can give that to them. Whether that be, oh, I need the script a week in advance. I need to um, know my motivation. I need to know the backstory. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they're like, you know, I don't need a, a script. Just I'll show up on the day of. I'll read it then. I can memorize it really quickly um, and give me really kind of physical, simple direction. Every actor is different, so ultimately figure out what they need from you and you can give that to them. And that level of communication, if you don't know what someone wants, that can be really tricky. Like, I mean, if when we shot Wild Boys with, yeah. with Jasmine, 
I mean, how we talk about yeah. that experience because that was a case well, where yeah. we. We never met her before. because yeah, we because we had another actress lined up who ultimately couldn't make the shoot. And mm -hmm. so she had recommended a friend of hers who really wanted to be in a movie and was kind of like, this is the perfect person for you guys. So we were texting over like a couple days and most of those messages, once I knew she was interested and wanted to be the project, was me doing my best to figure out what she wanted and what would work best for her. Yeah to be on set and what would make it easiest for her to do a performance because she had never been in a movie before. Yeah. That was her first experience ever acting in anything. Um, I think she may have done some like small things before, but never a feature film. So once that day came when she shows up on set, I have a rough idea of what she wants. But then again, we spent probably 30 minutes before cameras even started getting set up or anything like that just to talk to her, kind of walk her through the project, kind of go big scale and work our way in as much as possible. Giving her a giving, chance to yeah. ask questions exactly. and clarify. Yeah. And if we, cause if, if she showed up and we just started shooting, oh boy, that would, that have, would been have been really nightmare. weird. That, that probably would not have been very fun for her. Yeah. But also vice versa, if we had tried to schedule out, okay, let's schedule out, oh, li we literally couldn't schedule yeah, a day there to meet. no time. But if we scheduled out like three meetings in advance for, we're getting into the head of this character, mm -hmm. we're preparing, um, that probably wasn't needed for that movie. No. You know, you didn't need that level of preparation. Mm -hmm. um, and Jasmine seemed perfectly happy with, you know, the time that we gave her. She did an excellent job. She's my favorite character in that, yeah. in the movie. Um, so it's all about, you know, finding who you're working with and, and what they need from you and mm -hmm. what they can, um, what, and figure out how to do that. Because if you don't have the communication, again, let's look at another project. Um, you, the bell rings. Yeah, the this, bell rings was like that. A that was a very, di very different. Talk yeah. about that process. Yeah, because in the bell rings, I had known months in advance to my cast, mm -hmm. to months in advance, not even just to shooting, but even the script being finished. I knew who my actors were, so mm -hmm. I made a big point to make sure that the actors were in on the writing process as early on as I could. So I would have one on one or kind of three on two on one meetings where it'd be Jordan and I and one of the other actors, and we would just kind of meet and talk about what the character's kind of looking like at that point in the movie, seeing what their thoughts are, what their feelings are, what kind of character are they looking to play, what's interesting to them. And then from there, I would go take those notes, start compiling a draft of the script based on that. And then once that draft is done, I send it out to everyone. It's like, mm -hmm. all right, what do you like? What do you not like? What could be different? What's your kind of take on this character? And those notes were open, through, not just through drafts, but through production. Mm -hmm. There'd be multiple days on set where Jordan would come with sheets of paper written, handwritten yeah. for new lines in the script. Yeah. Um, one day you came in with a full two pages of script written, like oh, fully geez. typed up. <laughs> You're like, I wanted, I want to try this, and it was great. Um, that stuff. We're, I mean, we make it a point to have a very collaborative set. Mm -hmm. So if an actor comes with an idea, even if I'm not sure as the director if it's the right decision, as long as it fits roughly, at the very least, we're going to shoot both versions of the scene or that line and we'll see what plays better. And a lot of the times, what the actor feels is right usually is the thing that makes it into the take, and into I, the film movie. And yeah. I think where if we didn't have that, if we, if for the bell rings, mm -hmm. if we had showed up, you're getting the script on the day of. Oh man. Um, that would have been very difficult for, for us and all the actors involved. Yeah. Um, again, it kind of depends on the project, but it depends on the actor. And if you don't have that open communication going with whoever you're collaborating with, well mm -hmm. then they're not really collaborators, they're just, people that you want to use for their yeah. <laughs> talents and skills and then boot, you know, sweep them yeah. away once you're done. And that's not, personally, I mean, maybe you want to work like that. Doesn't sound very appealing to me, but yeah. uh, that I, the way we work is, as Ethan said, we are very collaborative. We like to take good ideas, as many good ideas as we can from whoever we can that we're working. We don't consider um, our sets to have like a hierarchy like you will on big normal sets. The way it works is if you're there to film for film for filmmaking, um, you don't have necessarily an assigned role. I mean, yes, you might be the primary actor or the yeah. primary cameraman or sound or whatever, but you're there knowing that, hey, my ideas will be heard on the set. My ideas are important on the set. And this movie is as much as mine as it is whoever wrote it or is directing it. And they can offer much more, like a boom operator can offer much more than just good sound stuff. They mm -hmm. can also contribute to the story of the character yeah. if they want. And that's why 
it's it's kind of side note. It's kind of weird when we try to credit like whoever's oh, yeah. there on set in not necessarily a designated role, but is helping out in a lot of different ways. So mm. a couple projects we've had, you know, we've got a few people help out on pro like your girlfriend, my girlfriend, yeah. Zach, who you you all know, or other friends, they'll show up to help out. Yeah. And they're, they're not there on any designated role, but they're doing a bajillion different stuff. So it's like, what do you call that? Because on our level, it kind of is like a PA, but it's not but it's just a PA. It's so much more. It's yeah. so much more. Um, and it's kind of hard to think of what to call those folks. So if anyone knows what we should call them, uh, that'd be very helpful. To just name, I've just been using onset support. <laughs> yeah, which does sound a little bit diminishing, but I think it encapsulates what they do best because they support us in mm -hmm. a bajillion different ways. Onset. Yeah, I don't know what else to say, but again, if anyone has a better idea, let us know. Yeah. Back to uh, the biggest mistake act yeah. or directors make. Yeah, so which how is do not we, spending time with actors. So how do you get more time with actors? Because there's there's kind of two ways you can do it. Again, we've kind of been getting to that in in both accounts. But it's a, it's either you gotta make time on set to be with them if that's what they need, mm -hmm. which is probably gonna require you as the director to have someone who's directing the crew for you while you can direct the actors more. And that doesn't necessarily mean they have to be like calling every shot but they should know like okay when we get on set these are the things that need to happen for us to kind of get set up smoothly and then you as the director can take as much time as you need with the actors which we don't really even do a lot necessarily but to some extent we do because I know a lot of the times like I'll set up lights while you're like working with like I think back to video carnage mm -hmm. um, there'd be a lot of times where you and Travis or you and May would kind of do your thing while I would just kind of do mm -hmm. the you give me a storyboard set and I'd go on my way. And it's but. it's one of those things too where even going back further, I would mm -hmm. say f just have have an initial have that you have to create that open dialogue with mm -hmm. your actor first and foremost. Yeah. And in general, I do like to meet with people at least once before we start filming. Mm -hmm. You can kind of get a vibe check from them. You kind of float ideas past them, see yeah. what sticks or not. Uh, we just shot a short film and with that, I met with the main actress, I met with her. I kind of, I texted her. I said, are you open to this, shooting this movie? She was like, yes, that sounds awesome. I kind of, and it wasn't even a formal meeting. I I was just over at her house and I said, hey, uh, this is kind of what we're thinking. What do you think? She gave us her ideas. We're like, great. And we made a plan. And then after that, because of the size of the project, it didn't really matter. We didn't need to meet a whole bunch more. We met maybe had, and when I say meet, like I just did, yeah. that was like maybe 15 minutes of conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and so had, you know, two two days of that. Yeah. So two separate 15 minutes of like, hey, this is where we're at with the movie. And then I took her out to dinner before with her family and stuff. And it was like, that was like, um, you know, even less conversation, but there's yeah. still a little bit <laughs> um, where I did, where I kind of walked her through the storyboards. And yeah. altogether, that was maybe 45 minutes. This is a, this, I feel like I'm getting on a tangent, but yeah. to sum up my point, um, I like to meet with everyone we work with at least once face-to-face -face because you're able to communicate. It's a lot easier to communicate face-to-face -face and yeah. kind of convey what you want. From that point on, um, follow through with, you know, set a plan for yourself or the two of you or however many actors are involved. Make a plan for yourselves, follow mm -hmm. through with it, and just keep that open communication um, there all throughout filming because if you keep that open people are going to trust you more whereas if you're withholding secrets and and information it's easier to communicate it's easier to trust each other it's easier to make art together and have fun together most importantly yeah. um yeah if there's that tension between you two it's just yeah. not gonna they're not gonna want to come back but also it's just gonna make it hard for them to kind of give you or make a performance that's good for the movie that you're making yeah um so it's really important that you're making sure that they're as comfortable as possible on set. And that's always our number one priority for anyone, crew or actor, but yeah. it, everyone's gotta be enjoying themselves, even if it's a difficult shoot. Yeah. Everyone should be having fun. So yeah. meet with so meet with your meet mm -hmm. with your actor at least one. I, I really recommend meet with them once, whether it be again for 15 minutes or a couple hour meeting where you're diving into yeah. your character and just figure out a plan and figure out how they work. If they mm -hmm. need lots of preparation, give them that prep time yeah. and be there for them if they need it. If they don't need anything and they just kind of want to go off and do their own thing, 
give them that space and yeah. trust that they'll come to set prepared and with something interesting. Yeah. And if you're open with them and honest and there's that dialogue back and forth, that also is helpful for you. Like if they're going off doing their own thing and you just want to make adjustments or like, oh, let's just make these adjust like these changes to the performance, that's not going to be as difficult of a conversation. It's going to be pretty like straightforward and everyone's got the same goal. So, yeah. yeah. But those are the things that we think are most important for directors to know going in. Working with your actors is really important that some people would think that's like one of the most important parts of the movie is the actors and the performances so take time with it it's something that's a craft and everyone's pulling together to make it an awesome thing so and even yeah. if that actor is just yourself yeah we've made movies other people have made movies where it's just them a camera yeah and that's it and that's cool too so give yourself that time yeah as a as an actor because if you're going to put yourself on screen you're an actor yeah or actress or whatever term you prefer um Whoever's on camera, whoever you're going to be seeing, whoever's going to be conveying emotion, any sort of emotion, mm -hmm. they are, you know, your actor. And that that's important to give them time and give them that kind of step, the, the part of the process of filmmaking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, if you want more filmmaking tips like this, be sure to subscribe. We put out videos every week and we also put out a weekly podcast where we talk all things filmmaking and movies. And also we make feature films here that you can watch right now for free. So check out the playlist on our channel. And if you want to support us further, we have a merch store that you can check out as well. But subscribe for more and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching everyone. If you didn't notice, Ethan and I are wearing some new Doomed Productions shirts. That's right, we have an official merch shop now. If you're interested in supporting us further, you can check out some awesome t-shirts, mugs, posters, sweatshirts down there. Mm -hmm. The link is in the description. Please check it out if you're interested in supporting us further. Thank you everyone for watching.